Hello, AVPA Media Music students. Today is our second virtual lesson, and uh, it's going to be a continuation of what we started last week. So today, the goal is to mix the score suite for the Memento or Bust film into a track made ready for online uh, music streaming distribution. So uh, this video is going to be in two parts. In our weekly meeting, I talked about the idea of this being um, a lesson where I show you how to mix and master something and then how to upload it into DistroKid for distribution. Uh, we're going to do the distribution part next week or in a couple days. And the reason why is I'm trying to keep these two one hour max um, so that way we can stay focused on a topic. So um, mixing a track that's this long and mastering it in an hour is already going to be a challenge enough. So without uh, furthermore, let's just get into it and uh, let's open up our logic session. So normally I would mix in Pro Tools uh, with all the stems from either Logic or Cubase, but since I'm using Pro Tools as a backup recording tape machine for my voiceover, um, we will just do it in Logic, and it'll be totally cool. It'll be a good way to, to practice mixing in Logic for me, and um, it'll be a lot of fun overall. And uh, I get to try out this new Logic Remote plugin, so um, you can't see it on the screen, but there is a iPad here that's going to be running Logic Remote, which is uh, Apple's free app to control Logic with an iPad. So we'll see if it is actually helpful or if it just looks cool and uh, doesn't actually do anything. So a couple of things that are different from last week. Um, my Mac Mini here, which is my main Mac, is now running Catalina. Uh, it's been pretty stable and uh, I'm actually pretty happy with it. The way it syncs between the iPad and the iPhone and the Mac is very good. Um, the new sidecar feature is okay. It leaves a little bit to be desired, but it's onto something cool. So um, let's see here. So we're going to just quit a couple apps we don't need right now. And then we are going to uh, open up Logic and get going with that. So Logic is open. And, um, and uh, here we go. So we're going to open up our track. This is the one from last week. And uh, we will uh, get this going. So this will just take a second. Uh, all of our samples here have been loaded already on our server PC. And here we go. So just a side note while this loads, someone asked a question about how the two computers are connected. How they are connected is through this, since I'm going Mac to Windows, we use this program called Microsoft Remote Desktop. If you're interested in experimenting with this, Microsoft Remote Desktop is available in the App Store. Um, and basically, this shows you your, your IP address of your local PCs and you can just connect to them as you need to. So I do have two PCs here. Um, this is more of a media machine, but you can use it for um, additional Vienna instances if needed. Um, the sample sets are almost identical on the computers, but I prefer just to use one Mac, one PC, and keep my life a little bit simpler. So we talked about different um, ways of approaching mixing. Uh, normally, you would actually turn all this MIDI information into audio before you mix, but um, for today's lesson, I think it's actually going to be more useful to show it as MIDI, kind of mixing with MIDI. And fortunately, computers are powerful enough now that we can do that. And also, um, the reason why I'm comfortable doing that is in a film score, your production quality should be pretty as high as it can be the whole time you're writing the score. So I feel like this mix is decent. It was a good, good enough mix for the film. And um, now we're just going to do a little bit more exciting OSG mix. And the reason why I say that is when you're mixing for a film, you have to mix maybe a little bit more conservatively. So your dialogue is kind of like your lead singer, and you need to stay out of the way. So um, this mix is probably not as bass heavy as it could be, or high end heavy, just because we were doing the whole film in two days for the 48 hour film festival. And um, I find that it's just better to play it safe than sorry um, and go a little bit lighter on the mix and stay out of the way of the dialogue, especially because I was warned that there would be lots of voiceover over doing a really aggressive mix like we're going to do right now uh, for the OST album. 
So to get started, we need to relabel our session. Um, this name is way too long, which can happen sometimes. So we are going to save as. The film is called Memento or Bus, so M-O-B. Uh, OST stands for Original Soundtrack. And this is going to be the mix. And it's going to be version, version 1.0. I'm going to do 1.1a. I did a 1.0a today earlier as a test run, and we are not going to use that. So, All right, so we've resaved our track. We're trying to keep things organized. And now we're going to open up a couple of mix-specific uh, plugins. So to start, we are going to unhide all of our channels to make sure we have access to everything we need. And then we are going to use Insight, very useful metering plugin. There is a built-in meter in Logic. Uh, unfortunately, I am not familiar with how it works currently, but soon enough I will. Uh, but for the sake of speed and uh, sticking to the game plan, we're going to use tools I'm already familiar with. So uh, Ozone is a mastering plugin. We are not going to turn this on until we get our mix kind of more where we want it. Um, I use Ozone more as a loudness compliance tool and kind of a finishing tool. I don't. Um, so we'll get to that point. Um, but the reason why I turned this on is this has a great way of turning your stereo output into a mono output. And how I like to mix for OST records is for the first few minutes, we are going to turn this into mono and do our what's called static balancing in mono. And I will explain what static balancing is in one second. So um, there's all these cool presets in here. I would do loudness meter USA. I do like seeing the history though. So you're going to turn the history on. This is obnoxiously large. Here we go. And then we're going to set our targets. So um, if you're really fancy, you could mas ma do a master for every single distribution platform. I don't have the time or resources to do that. So I just do what Spotify recommends, which is a minus one peak and a minus 14 lefts. Uh, the reason why I conform to Spotify's requirements is, to the best of my knowledge, they are very similar to Apple Music's requirements, and Spotify and Apple Music are the most popular online streaming platforms. I do believe Amazon Prime is in that same ballpark. Um, I think YouTube lets you go up to minus 13 lefts, but a little extra headroom never hurt anyone. So we will turn that on when we get closer to the mastering part. But for now, we're going to start with some static balances, which is, I think is a good way to start a mix. Static balancing, all it is, is we're going to just be doing general volume adjustments on the whole track. And once we get the overall volume of the tracks right, we can either raise or lower the volume. We want to be at around minus 6 decibels before we print our pre-master. And you want to put a track into Ozone that has a good amount of headroom. So we're going to just start from the top. And uh, we, we are listening to this in mono, so it's going to sound a little weird at first. And an important note, we also have a reference mix from the of this whole track bounced down as it is currently right here. So we can just turn that on if we want to hear how things sound and hear where we're going. Um, it's also a good idea to sometimes put reference mixes for things you like, but we're just going to use our own track as a reference. And um, all right, here we go. Let me just make sure my loudness going into OBS is okay. Uh, we're going to start here, and uh, we will see if this works. So right now, we're just thinking about overall volume. So I think this piano can come way up. Omnisphere patch can come way up too. This is like another piano sound. Notice how I'm doing this static balance with the whole track playing. The reason why we do the static balances with all the elements playing is mixing is about the relationship between all of the instruments together. It's not about just making one sound perfect. static balances, we're just setting our intention for the mix.
so this track is getting pretty hot. We only have about a decibel of headroom, so we will have to address that in a little bit and uh, create some more headroom for ourselves. sound probably wasn't very clear in the context of this whole mix so we're gonna just bring it up and you'll notice I'm mixing pretty fast part of that is because I want to keep this less than to an hour but another part of it is is mixing is about keeping things exciting so I think it's better to have an exciting mix that maybe maybe isn't EQ'd perfectly to having a mix that's perfectly balanced, perfectly EQ'd, but doesn't really draw any listener interest. Okay, so this melody sound is still way too low. high sounds. If you take out more low end, you'll probably make it a little bit more clear. So let me just rewind here. I can illustrate that. This is down here. If I bring this up, watch what happens. strings as well is um, I think the MIDI is actually a little bit sloppy so we will clean up the MIDI in a little bit and that's another reason why doing a mix with your MIDI is really helpful so you can approach enhancing your mix from a compositional aspect as well as a um, mix aspect with audio plugins and stuff like that all right Even though we're in mono, if I actually clean up these string parts a little bit, we're using expression and modulation to um, automate our strings here. The modulation on the most samples is kind of your dynamic control between piano and forte. So, so if the modulation is really low, we're hearing like a kind of a piano. 
the expression is the overall volume of the patch. So you use them together to create swells. So in Logic, orange is our modulation, and um, this looks okay, but it can be a little cleaner. Um, going into your MIDI, you want to have it ease into it, and that's just because MIDI uh, is an older platform and it's slow, and if you have a bunch of bumps and spikes, um, it can make the sampler act kind of weird. So the expression here, as you can see, is actually very low, and that's not helpful to what this score is about. So we're going to just take a second, and we're going to clean this up. Looks better. And uh, just gonna bring this up. So it's more in line with the other ones. And, and this kind of mini editing applies to all the genres of music. Um, at least things where you're using orchestral samples. Okay, so that is done. That's looking a little bit better. And notice how the expression is different from the modulation. You don't want them to match each other. It's very uh, tempting to just copy your modulation data onto your expression, but they function a little bit differently, and you want them to work together, but also have them do what they do best independently as well. Okay, so let's see. Just doing that should already start to make the strings a little bit more balanced. We're going to fix our Bernard Herrmann part because, as I often do, everything is double-tracked or triple-tracked. Because that just kind of makes it more fun. So that looks decent. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to raise all of these up quite a bit. Okay. looks better. So just doing that should already make the track feel a little bit more balanced. And that's just with two patches. Uh, let's do our individual sections here. Let's just see how it sounds. So we just made our big ensemble patches a little bit more balanced. Let's see if this has a better emotional impact on the audience. Alright, that's already quite a bit better. Let's adjust these ones too. And um, the reason why I can work pretty fast is I have a dedicated set of key commands on this computer. And I also always have in the MIDI editor my second command. In Logic, your command key will function as a alternate tool. So for me, it's always the regular mouse and the pencil. So I can just press command, and I can be in pencil mode that quickly. Um, that rarely changes. going on outside, but it's a little annoying. Welcome to West LA. So, all right, here we go. We've got one more. 
on base part. And same thing, Just make these a little bit more even. And yes, I could do it up with my MIDI faders here, but there is something about just enhancing the fades that are already there that isn't such a bad idea. Because this is more of a level adjustment than it is a volume fading adjustment. So. So we should notice a lot more presence in our low strings now. I was composing very fast last weekend. Uh, this piano part just kind of ends abruptly here. So we're going to extend this piano part to uh, cover the rest of the track. And I think this C sharp note should not be here, actually. So to check that, we'll play it against the part it's doubling. So this is the part it's doubling. happen, but it's not correct for this part of the, the track. So we will just edit, edit these mini regions and uh, have this piano part extend for the duration of the piece. Another thing I noticed too, um, and this goes back to what I was talking about earlier, about making a little bit less of an aggressive mix when you're not sure how the dialogue is going to turn out, is I notice that I have a sub bass part here that is actually muted that I want to have in here for the, um, the actual composition. So the sub bass part is just doubling our orchestral basses, and that's a cool trick to make it sound huge. So right now I just exist on this one hit. We're going to have it extend through the whole piece how we want it to originally. So to undo that, we're going to unmute that. And then we are going to double check that the notes are correct against our bass part. And to have your MIDI colors from the tracks appear in the MIDI editor in Logic, you have to go here to View and go to Set Note Color by Region Color. And that is the way I prefer to do it. I think that's a bit of a holdover from using Cubase for so many years. Um, velocity is useful, but um, most of the time I just want to see what's in my session represented in my MIDI editor. Um, so we're going to double check that all the notes are correct and that this doubling is in fact right. See how gigantic that sounds when you put sub bass with orchestral bass. So. It's one of my favorite sounds in contemporary cinematic music. So 
so a certain sense, you really need to be quantized right on the grid. And, and um, otherwise, sometimes nerds don't sound properly, and that can be very annoying. So I'm just going to double check that everything is snapped to, to the grid. So we're going to make sure that these line up and that these notes here are correct. So we're going to have the sub bass part end when the orchestral strings end right here. Alright. So, no sub bass, it sounds like this. sub bass oh yeah and remember we're still in mono so we'll put this back in stereo it's gonna sound huge so that's already sounding gigantic in mono so let's put let's go back in stereo for a second let's hear how this sounds right now Very nice. All right, so the reason why I turned this down was just to control how hot the audio is going into OBS. Um, I'm using this as a live streaming setup, so you have to make some compromises. All right, so this track is uh, very getting pretty hot. So we're hitting zero decibels, and that is not enough headroom to do a good master. So we're going to turn those on off for a second, and we're going to take this statically balanced mix that we're fairly happy with, and we're going to just create some more room for ourselves. So the easiest way to do that is just to highlight all of your tracks. And this is part of the reason why you don't put automation on the volume faders before you have a general idea of what you want. What I mean by that, if I had been in here in automation and I had been adjusting every one of these, if I had been in volume automation here, adjusting every single track individually while I composed, you wouldn't be able to do what I'm about to do right now. So that's why you want to save this type of detailed volume editing for a different part of this, the process after you have your kind of general mix intention set. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn everything down a little bit, including our auxiliary sense here with our effects. So let's just go down by three decibels. So if we're at looking at this one right here, let's go down to minus 13. And it's going to lower all of these relatively proportionally. So. Now we are going to reset our stereo out so we can monitor and see where we're at. And let's see how this is feeling now. This is like the loudest part of the track, so we'll start here. So if the loudest part of our track has six decibels of headroom, minus six, we're in really good shape for a good master. Okay. 
pretty good. That might, might even be more headroom than me. Strings are much louder than the synths. That's not necessarily what we want. So we're going to just turn our strings down a little bit. Make this a little bit more balanced. We have quite a bit of headroom to work with here. This is really good. So you see how our output is just green? That is much better for producing a good master than if it's yellow or red. See if anything had automation on it. Looks like our sub bass might have. Uh, oh, that's sub bass short, so it's gonna be okay. All right. So now that we've created more headroom for ourselves. We're going to go through and we're actually going to do one more pass of static balancing. Um, so we're going to go back into mono. And now that we've created some more room, we're going to just automate the fader. We're not going to automate the faders. We're just going to move the faders to hear more of what we want from the track. Just turning up my headphones here because there's a lot of headroom now.
we're minus six is our goal. So this is good. We have quite a bit, quite a bit of room to work with. balance so I'm gonna go back in a stereo and one thing I notice um, and this can happen when you're mixing fast is I'm using two reverbs here bus one and bus two two different types of reverbs to kind of blend and glue everything together so what I've noticed is that not every element of the mix is going through this kind of blend process so we're gonna take a second and we are going to go through and add reverb two. we're gonna add the option to have reverb to all of our sounds so let's start up here. Looks like we got everything up here. Looks like these two guys, these two additional percussion sounds did not get included. That's okay. So in Logic, if you press shift, you can add as many buses as you have selected. So notice I'm not turning these on yet. I'm just giving myself the option to have them at some point. So all these Omnisphere tracks here don't have any reverb sentence. So we are going to add that. And then, like I've been doing the whole time, we will play this back and we will add in the reverb in real time. Um, once again, I don't worry about being too exact. It's just about getting the right intention and the right feeling across. Okay. And, you know, some of these actually might be better dry, but I have a feeling that if we kind of glue the mix together a little bit, um, it's going to sound like all these sounds are coming from one room. And that's kind of the goal uh, with hybrid music, is that you have all these samples from different places. You have um, you have strings recorded in, like, England for these, and then you have, um, you know, all these synthesizer parts that are done here in the box and don't ever touch any live air. And uh, when you add reverb, you can kind of mix the different realities of the sound sources together and um, sort of be deceptive with where everything's coming from. You want everything to sound like it's coming from one place and all these sounds existed together and happened in real time. So we're going to play the mix from the top and we are going to add in reverb and see how it's feeling. So the space sounds a good example of this. So if we add the reverb, we should make it quite a bit wider. So a good rule to follow is the 20% rule. So you crank up your reverb to where it sounds cool, and then you bring it back down to be balanced.
notice how the reverb on this the sound kind of smooths it out. Overall, it's time to uh, check the progress we've made, or lack of, depending on how you view it. Um, that's why we put this reference track in here. So let's just see if we made any good improvements or if we're just turning this into mud. And this is one of the hardest parts about mixing from home and by yourself. Even if we crank up our original mix pretty loud. It lacks a little bit, you know. So let's meet this and play our track. This is the original mix. Not bad. Here, where we're at now.
now that I've had my balance is kind of going, I am going to do a little bit of, um, I am going to press A and do some detailed automation now. So I feel like around here, the space pulse part needs to come up a little bit.
All right, so this mix is feeling pretty balanced. Um, you know, it has the artistic intent I intend as a the composer and producer of this track. So um, I think the best thing to do, I've been mixing for about an hour, um, is actually to take a break from the mix and go for a walk around the block. And then I will bounce this down and I will master it and it will be ready for streaming services. So basically, the point is, is that if you already have a decent track, um, in about two, three hours, you should be able to fine tune it, mix it, clean it up, and get it ready for the to share with the world. So we will continue with that in the next section. So I decided after eating that uh, the first pre-master isn't as balanced as I like, so I'm actually going to do another quick uh, mix pass. So there are some elements that I thought weren't uh, clear enough in the mix. So. We're gonna do one more mix pass. All right, so here's the one sound I wanted to fix. This guitar sound is um, a little buried in the mix, so we're gonna address this in two ways. One, we're gonna EQ it a little bit. should have done is actually save this as a, another version so we'll do that right now version 1.2 save that and now we will bounce down our final pre-master so once again uh, a pre-master is the track is your final two mix bounce down of your entire track before you apply mastering compression to it. Right, so here's a tip. When you uh, bounce down a pre-master, put it into real time and listen to the track play down. So 
now that we have our final pre-master done, we are going to master the pre-master. So mastering the pre-master, we're going to just start this process from step one. So um, I like to use a plugin called Ozone 9, and uh, this plugin has artificial intelligence built into it, and it helps you establish your loudness, um, which is pretty awesome. So the trick to using Ozone 9 is you want to start at the loudest part of your track. It's just going to do its thing for a second. Alright, so this is what the AI is suggesting. So, this is a great starting point. So, what I like to do is I like to add a few more of these plugins. Um, just to kind of sculpt the sound a little bit further. So the ones I like to use are Vintage Tape, the Exciter, and the Vintage Limiter to kind of finish things off. So uh, this is very cool. So this is my first time using this version of the plugin. So we'll see how it goes. Normally I mix and master in uh, Pro Tools or Cubase, but today we're going to do it magic. We'll see what happens. like to use the vintage tape it's just to color the sound a bit more so this AI thing is done a great job of getting us kind of in the ballpark where we, where we want to be um, and uh, this is more of a coloring thing than a master so I like to have the high end be pretty pretty crispy so we can see what this is doing if you watch the high end here you'll start to see it go up a little bit Good master, we want this luffs to be averaging around 14. So we still have quite a bit of headroom to work with. And I'll show you a trick of getting this part up to get this part in one second. Use the exciter to accentuate the high end.
So, right now we're just checking this overall loudness. So, when this really loud part of the track kicks in, we want this to be averaging around 14. Minus 14. So we're about one left over, so we're going to lower our ma maximizers by a decibel or two. Okay, so if you get an error like that in Logic, what you can do is you can go into here and you can increase your buffer size. So let's see. So in some ways, when you're doing this kind of automation, you're almost working backwards in a way. Because on the loud parts, you're often coming down a little bit. And on the soft parts, you're often kind of coming up a little bit. pre-master pass of the track before we print it. So to review, uh, there's been a lot of steps. We mixed our track up here with all the elements. We did a cue and compression and uh, did a balance that we were happy with that we thought represented the music. Then we turned that into a pre-master. We took that pre-master, we ran it through a mastering suite called the Ozone. And now we are in the final process of hearing this mix through ozone and doing some volume automation to help the listener um, hear everything we want them to hear but to also have the track be balanced on multiple types of streaming platforms without completely ruining the dynamics so let's see what it sounds like our goal loudness is approximately minus 14 lefts we are ready to uh, bounce our final Pre our final master and uh, I know that was quite a bit of it that was a lot of information and uh, it actually took quite a bit longer to put this together than I thought it would but in part two I will just I will go over how you take this audio file and prepare it for digital distribution on DistroKid uh, it'll be really fun to see that so I look forward to sharing that with you and, uh, this is our final master I'm going to print it and I like to print my final masters in real time. It gives you one last opportunity to check your work and make sure you're happy with it. So when you do a final master, we're going to call it uh, version 1.3a, mastered final. And uh, thanks for
watching, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope uh, that was insightful.